Hello again. So I'm going to talk about some of the uh, sound design synth related and creative affecting stuff that I've done in the sad machine uh, reinterpretation. So I'll start with these, this ambient layer down here. Basically this sort of bleeds in and cuts out uh, as the track plays. So I've got some automation on uh, this group's filter. Basically it sounds like this. Cool, so real pretty stuff. Um, yeah, so the way this was made was, I believe I will turn this device off for just a sec and we'll see what this actually is. Yeah, cool. So what that is, is definitely the grains track that we had discussed previously. So all the granular stuff that I had made, I dropped into a new audio channel and then I used this device uh, by a gent named Tom Cosm who is an absolute legend yeah authorized Ableton teacher he's been around for a very long time and he makes Max for Live devices so he just released this the other week it's a pay what you want thing I highly suggest checking it out if you want to experiment basically it is a granular reverb so anything that you put through it you can mangle and turn into a gigantic wall of noise. With this, I haven't really done too much to it. I did initially have some of the granular mix present, but I found that it was too distracting as there was a few transients that would come through. So I left it on just the reverb with absolutely no, no dry signal. And then I've used that group filtering automation above here to duck that out and then give it more presence at different points. And as well, I've uh, taken all of the lows and most of the low mids out of that. So the other layer in this is, I think it's a new Live 11 instrument. And that sounds like this. So yeah, it's just a um, it's a pad device basically. It's just this group of effects and a uh, sampler. So those two things together uh, being filtered uh, in unison. I think I tried to distort it at one point, but uh, obviously decided to not do that. That makes up the basis for uh, all the drones in the background here. So once again, it's just more of this reuse of the original demo that I'd made. So resampling is the heart of this project pretty much. I haven't been able to confirm this with the artist who I'm basing all of this off. This is just an educated guess. I did join their Discord community as well to see if I could ask and uh, spent a couple of hours just sort of sorting through there by keywords and searching for stuff. And most of the production advice on there from their community of musicians is leads the same direction but um moving on basically the rest of this synth group is a bunch of different stuff <laughs> particularly for this midsection most of the early half of the song is pretty much empty aside from this bass which is just a sine wave really that's this no. yeah just a sine wave with a really long release on it I've got this electric bass, which is just a, I think it's a sampler. Yeah, it's just a sampler instrument um, that comes native to Ableton. Yep, uh, real straightforward. And then as well, I've got this on here. This layer was initially an arpeggio, which is just a serum patch basically. So nothing too special here either. Uh, it's just providing that fifth harmony over the bass notes there. If I solo the synths group entirely. Yeah, 
yeah, you'll notice that there's all these other bits. So I've spent a while just sort of constructing, yeah, little bits of random sounds like this hocket section here. Actually, yeah, this is worth talking about. So what hocketing is, um, it's something I was doing without knowing I was doing it for a long time. Uh, it's basically just juggling different 16th or 8th notes between different instruments. So instead of having, say, one guitar playing 16th, you would spread each note or a pattern of notes out amongst a bunch of different instruments, which gives it this sort of jumpy sound. In this song, it's these bits. And the way that's achieved, I've got this muted hocket group here, but that recording is just straight out of this. So this hocket group is this MIDI clip. It says kalimba bits on it, but that's because there was a kalimba and it's no longer there. On this track here, this MIDI channel, there's this device called Hocket Send. And what this will do is every single time a note is played, it will cycle through a different MIDI output. So first note on one, two, etc. And then I've loaded all of these different instruments into these and put a Hocket Receive or Return. So this first instrument is set to input one, the second one input two, third one input three, etc. So on their own, if I played this one, it is a little muted guitar sample. If I play this one, it's a Glock. Yep, there you go. Uh, this one's a marimba. There's a flute. Uh, suitcase um, clav. And then slap bass. And then an electric guitar. When I play this back, basically this MIDI sequence here that I made is just going to send every note that's triggered to a different instrument and play it back. And because there are an odd amount of these, I think there's, yeah, there's seven instruments. So because there's seven different destinations for it, every time you play it back, it's a little bit different. So I think my process for this was just to record a few different passes of it so that the different notes would hit different instruments uh, each time. And then I picked uh, a take essentially that I felt was good. So in context, that sounds like this. <laughs> I take uh, some of these other groups below it out and just mute these. You should get this. That's pretty much that. Yeah, the only other couple of things in here are um, samples that I made uh, this year out of percussion. So this was a series of delays from um, an external sequencer and synth that I've got called the OP-1, which is this. It sounds like water, but it's actually just a bunch of different delays. Same with this, I believe. If I search in here, this is this bank of um, sounds that I've been making. And yeah, I find this stuff really useful basically. So yeah, those little sprinkles through there and then a bunch of resampled Reese's, um, which basically just like distorted basses and stuff. Altogether, that has this like sort of jumpy effect, which is kind of cool, particularly when you've got those affected sort of distorted vocal leads over it and stuff. <laughs> There is one very important part that I just remembered in here. This isn't exactly a synth thing at all. So that initial bounce that I had of the demo, I dragged that into 
uh, into live in the first session actually. And it is all these jumpy little bits. I've got the name Chuck Sutton on here because Chuck is the dude who I learned this from. Basically it's a super basic Ableton function. I'll try and see if I can get, actually I've got my reference tracks down here or some reference tracks. So I'll explain it visually on this. It's probably much easier. Say I've got uh, this song. All right, so it's just playing back normally. But if I warp this and then this little drop down menu here chooses uh, transient selection. So at the moment it's going both ways, so it'll just kind of play everything evenly. But if you pick just forward transients or yeah, sharp bits, then you can start to lower the sensitivity here, which sounds like this. So you can very quickly get these odd points of attack where Ableton will detect a transient and then just play the file back however it feels like it basically. Yeah, so I did that to the entire track that I'd made as the demo and then pulled that back into the session and then found little parts that I felt complemented it. it it's very easy to sort of mistake it for intentional swing, which is great because it's a it's happy accident territory, sort of Bob Ross style. So this is the bit, I guess, to listen for. And then in context, that sounds like this. These accidental little like rhythmic flourishes are really fun, I think. Yeah, cool. Um, I think that pretty much covers it for the synthesis end of it. I did have tons of other stuff in here initially, like there's a Mellotron, I think, floating around, which obviously tonally doesn't fit <laughs> anymore, which is why it's no longer in the song. There's a few of these. I think there was, uh, what are you? I think this might be a Spitfire thing. Yeah, it's a brass quartet, which once again, didn't end up using it. But yeah, that's this iterative process I keep talking about, I guess. That should cover it for synthesis. There may be a couple of things that I'll come back and revisit, but for the time being, yay. Cheers. Thanks very much.